Hi everyone, this is Adam Fisher, and in this little uh, video lesson, I'm just going to give you kind of a rundown of using the storyboard template that I've uh, utilized throughout all my years of teaching and provided to my students so they can storyboard their scenes for their uh, final projects. To open the template in Photoshop, you basically just go to File, Open, and you would track it down. And then when it opens up in Photoshop, it appears like this. Uh, the first thing you'd want to do is you actually want to uh, rotate it counterclockwise so it uh, fits horizontal and you're allowed to actually work with it. Uh, what you would do is actually go up to image, image rotation, and go 90 degree counterclockwise. And that would rotate and fix it. Keep in mind there's two uh, rotational values here. You got image rotation uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. You wouldn't want to do it clockwise because that would rotate it uh, 90 degrees clockwise. In this case, you want to go image, image rotation, 90 degree counterclockwise. This is a really nice storyboard template. Uh, if you're noticing up top, it allows you to write in your name for the storyboarder, place in the date, the uh, storyboard title, and then uh, it has this also little scene uh, selectional area. Um, in the industry, not only are they called scenes, uh, we like to switch scene to panel because uh, you, you'll have multiple panels for one scene, and then you have multiple scenes for uh, uh, to complete out an entire uh, story. Um, you can always basically just come on down here under the layers menu, create a new layer, and on this layer, I'll just go ahead and create, uh, I'll rename it. You can double click it and then type in on your keyboard, I'll call it contents. And uh, here, if you notice, and you have two swatches over here on the left of Photoshop, you got a foreground swatch and a background swatch. Uh, I'm just going to left click and select the foreground color swatch. You notice it's black already. I'll switch it to a white in the color picker and click OK. And then I can use the brush tool over here in, in Photoshop. I'm going to select the brush tool. And I can just basically now just click and drag and wipe that out since that layer is selected. And I'm creating on that layer. Turning that layer off, you can see that that's what's been drawn that layer. I'm just covering up. And I can create a new layer. Um, what I would do first is I want to actually select the color I need for my, uh, my text. So I'm going to create a text layer to replace that text there instead of scene. And I'm going to go ahead and switch the color, click on the foreground swatch uh, again here, and just select black, click OK. And then I'll grab the text tool, which is over here in Photoshop. And then I can left click anywhere on my, my, uh, my scene here. And if you're noticing, the cursor's created, and it's already created a new text layer. And I'll just go ahead and type in panel. And then click on the selection tool, locks that in. And if I, at any time I need to adjust the text size, I can just double click the T. And Photoshop selects that text, and I got point size here, the style I want to be using. I can even change the uh, the typeface, but I'm just going to go and lower the point size. Let's say 15, make it more reasonable. Uh, once that's done, just click the uh, selectional tool. Let's activate, and then you can click and drag and move it around. Okay. Uh, you could turn any of your layers on and off at any time. That's how layers work in Photoshop. So if you have, uh, if you need, like I said, you have multiple. Uh, shots uh, that are in one scene. Um, that's how you can edit that very easily in uh, Photoshop. Okay. In this case, um, a lot of the projects I assign to my students, you only really need six frames to draw on because they do short story animations. But that, you know, that shows you basically how you can modify the panels if you need to if working in the industry. I'm just going to select the first one, which is my text layer, hold shift, select the contents layer. And with them both select, I'll go down to the bottom right, click the trash can and then say uh, delete uh, layers yes and that will uh, wipe them out so back to square one okay so if I want to add a title across here I could do it one or two ways I can again use the text tool I can select it grab the point size I want what I want uh, make sure my foreground color swatch is the color I want and then I can just left click in here and it goes in and creates a new text layer and then I can type in uh, my name and then once it's typed in, you can click drag to modify it further. If you like what you got, click the selectional tool, locks it in. Um, and then I can use it again to create the dates, uh, whatever that is, the story title, and then the, uh, uh, the number for the scene. So if I wanted, if I only had one scene inside my uh, animated storyline, I could just put a, uh, I could just put a one, lock it in. So maybe there is only one scene in my entire animated story. Okay. Uh, or let's say I, uh, I can delete both these layers. I'll just select the first one, hold shift on my keyboard, select the second, click, drag, and drop them down in the trash can. Or I can just click the trash can and say 
delete selected layers. Yes, knock them out. Um, there's a really nice drawing tablets that are used in the industry. The ones that I favor the most is uh, Wacom tablets. Um, they come in a, a variety. The one I'm currently using, it's a, uh, a tablet like this one, which uh, you, know, you can purchase for a reasonable price. You place it on your lap or on your desk, carry it around with you, plugs in, installs a driver pretty much on any computer. And then uh, you can use it. You use it wherever you want, uh, at school or at home, working on your projects. Um, the other Wacom uh, tablets, so they're, they're called Cintiqs. And these uh, are, are very expensive, but they're, uh, they're really, really beautiful hardware to use. Um, I've used these in industry as well. Um, as you can see, you can see the, the price of these. But they uh, they basically work like a computer monitor. You have a monitor, uh, it works just like it, and then you draw on the monitor, and it has all the additional buttons here where you can rotate and uh, pretty much rotate the entire screen, and uh, you draw right onto the monitor. It's a really, really beautiful piece of hardware. I, I suggest looking into them. I know that they are very expensive, but uh, like I said, I've, I've used them out there, and they, uh, they work really, really well. Um, the number one thing you need to look out for, though, when you're purchasing a Wacom tablet, Cintiq, whatever, um, make sure you look up and uh, check out its pressure sensitivity. The pressure sensitivity is pretty key. The better the pressure sensitivity of the uh, drawing pen uh, for the tablet use, uh, the uh, more uh, refined your lines are in Photoshop. So back in Photoshop, I'm currently using a tablet right now. Um, I'm going to go over to what's called the brush tool. So I'm going to make sure my my color is what I want. And in this case, I like using uh, the color black just to start out and get my uh, my lines all generated here. And then you can grab the brush tool, which is right here in the tool palette. And up top, you notice you have its uh, its settings. So if I click this little down arrow, I can go in, I can adjust its size, its hardness. I like to use it with uh, hardness around 50. Um, if it's uh, zero hardness, it, it makes the, uh, the, uh, the edge of the brush more feathered. And then if it's 100% uh, hardness, it's so it's so refined that it's literally like like uh, drawing with a, a real ink pen. So anyway, I like to do it kind of in between. I always like to do 50. I like to have a little bit of feather and just a little bit of heart. So I go right in the middle. This is your size, of course. And then you, down here, you notice you can click this little uh, dial, and it just uh, allows you to scroll through and select different styles of brushes you might want to explore using. So uh, once that's uh, when, you know, once you get the settings you want, just click that little arrow, it goes back up, and you're back in here. So I've got my, uh, my brush tool selected, I got the color black, and I can uh, start going in here and uh, I can simply just uh, even start uh, writing in the information I want besides using the text tool. Um, the first thing I'd want to do is create a new layer. So down here you would create a new layer in Photoshop. Uh, it's located right, to, you know, right by the little trash can icon. It says create a new layer. Click that, left click, and you'll see a new layer appears in your uh, layer menus here. If you're not seeing your layers, um, basically just go to window and make sure they're turned on. It's right there. And uh, to rename your layers, you can just double click uh, layer one. It selects it. I can type in, uh, let's just call this uh, info. And then I would hit enter, locks it in, and I still have the brush tool activated. And on this layer, I can basically just use my, uh, my, my pen, my tablet here, to, to uh, write in my name if I wanted to, besides using the, uh, the text tool. Okay, I could write in a date here. I could put in my story title, whatever that might be. I'm just going to write title for this uh, lesson, and then I could even uh, write in my scene. So if I wanted, uh, if I had just one scene, uh, I just put a one here. Um, I could create a new layer. I'm going to go down here and uh, again, I'm just using my, my pen and tablet. I'll create a new layer, and I can name this layer. Double click it. Use the keyboard. To type in and name it Frame One. Because technically that's exactly what this is right here. Um, I could draw what I wanted on this frame. So if I had a character, and I could create this character, whatever they're doing, the direction they're looking. Um, maybe they've got their body turned to somebody and they're coming at them. You know, uh, I got a horizon line. Whatever it is that I wanted to draw in here kind of uh, visually telling of the story. Um, down here, you notice I have lines. Well, this would be where the script is. So uh, I could even, as it applies to industry, write frame one, uh, colon, character, 
uh, attacking, you know. Um, and then, you know, so forth and so forth, whatever uh, is in that script. Uh, if I don't want to do that, uh, notice I created all this under frame one. This layer can turn it on and off. Uh, I can just use the eraser tool, select it, eraser tool, activate it in Photoshop. Uh, the pen and your tablet can be used the same way to just erase that information out. I could have written all this on another layer if I wanted to. Let's erase that out. I can use the text tool instead of uh, the brush tool to write it in, which a lot of students use and I use also. I, I use quite often um, for my storyboard drawing uh, just using the text tool. So if I select this text tool and make sure the color is black, which it is, click OK. I can then just left click here and I could just type it in. Colon. Character attacks. Once that's in, just Click the uh, selection tool up here, locks it in. You can click and drag and move it around however you want. I prefer use of the, the text tool over using the, uh, the pen to write it in just because it's more user friendly because I can just double click this T anytime, go up and I can uh, just adjust the point size. If I need to add more than, than what, uh, what I wrote there, I can just make the adjustment very easily. And then click that selection tool, lock it in, and then I can kind of scale it down, double click the T, then click the cursor and finish uh, my sentence or add in more information. Um, I can even hit enter, enter down if I want. Sometimes when you enter, hit enter and enter down, uh, it doesn't uh, fit real well on the next line down. You might have to hit enter again just to kind of see if you can play with it. Um, if that doesn't work, the best thing to do is just basically you want to create one line of text on the first line. You can take this layer text and have it select and right click on in your layer menu and then go to duplicate layer, click OK, and then with the selection tool activated, just click and drag and bring it down. I can double click the T, you can notice it, a, a duplicated layer uh, of my text, and then I can double click the T and go in and I can change this sentence to uh, uh, And finish it however I want it to say. Period. So that gives you a basic understanding and breakdown of uh, using the storyboard template in Photoshop, um, using the tools such as the brush tool, uh, text tool, and uh, what you can utilize in order to uh, build out your visual storytelling for all your uh, future animated projects. Keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts. You can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching and 